Hey, welcome back. So in the previous lecture, you saw the block diagram of the timer two peripheral, right? That is the general purpose timer. So we have to use the general purpose timer for this exercise in order to understand the input capture. Now, how the input capture works and how to calculate the frequency of the signal what we're going to give as an input to the timer is demonstrated in this uh, PPT. So here, the external signal frequency is not measured directly, but it is computed from the number of clock pulses counted using the timer. So now let's understand this with an example. Okay, so first what happens is your timer's counter will be triggered, okay? So it will be keep counting, all right? So when you trigger the time-based generation unit of the timer, what happens? It will keep counting, isn't it, until it reaches the ARR value. Let's assume that the ARR value is at maximum, okay? So it will be just counting. The timer counter will just be counting, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 51, 52, 53, etc. And let's assume that the timer count clock is 1 kilohertz. So that means the resolution of the counting will be 1 milliseconds. Okay, great. So now let's say you apply an input signal to the input channel of the timer. And when that rising event of that input signal occurs, what happens is the counter value will be copied to the capture and compare register of that channel, okay? But remember that the timer counter will always be ticking, okay? The timer counter will not get interrupted by any external or internal events, okay? A value will get copied into the capture and compare register. And when the next rising event of the same signal occurs, again the timer counter value will be copied to the same register that is the capture compare register so here if you don't save this number you may lose that number here so you have to save this number okay and you just take the difference between these two numbers that is 61 minus 54 that gives actually 7 right so and the resolution is 1 milliseconds so we can say that the time period of this input signal is 7 milliseconds. And by using that info, we can calculate the frequency of this input signal. Great, now let's move forward. I hope you have understood this. And this is the timing diagram of input capture. So as I said here, so when the rising edge occurs, a capture interrupt will be generated by the timer engine and a capture happened callback will be called to your main application and in the main application you have to save the value which is that in the capture and compare register you have to save it okay and when the next rising event of the external signal happens again the capture interrupt will trigger once again and you will get another number here okay so you got one number here and you will get another number here and you just take the difference of these two numbers and you will get the time period of the external signal. All right, so this is the mechanism used in order to calculate the time period or the frequency of the applied signal to the uh, input channel of the timer. And let's see how we can do this by using code. So let's get into our IDE and let's start coding.